Hi guys, Dr. Dillard here. It is week six. It's the summer of 2022. It's time for the lecture on basal cell carcinoma. Uh, here we go. And where have we been though? Last lecture we talked about malignant melanoma. Here's a nice slide that summarizes malignant melanoma. Um, remember, the danger of malignant melanoma is its ability to metastasize. Basal cell carcinoma is a different animal. It doesn't like to metastasize, which is good. So uh, the death rates are much lower with it. Uh, malignant melanoma is killer, uh, especially nodular malignant melanoma, as we talked about, because sometimes it, you can be gone within three, four months sometimes, depending on when you catch it. Uh, we said there are four main types. The most common was superficial spreading melanoma. The most deadly and second most common type was nodular melanoma. Then we have lentigo malignant melanoma, which is the third most common. That one almost always occurs only on the face or neck. Very, very slow radial growth phase. So the cancer grows parallel to the skin and doesn't get down into the blood where the blood vessels and lymph vessels are. Uh, so that one takes a long time to uh, become malignant or spread. And then we have arcuolentiginous melanoma. It's a relatively rare one. Uh, this one only occurs on the palms, the soles of your feet, or on the nail beds. That's the glabrous skin, palms and soles of the feet. We said African Americans are much more susceptible to this type. This is the type that killed Bob Marley, got underneath uh, the nail or started in the nail matrix. Uh, and when that's a special type of arcuolentiginous melanoma when it starts in the nail, and that's called subungual melanoma. Okay, but let's talk about basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common type of skin cancer, and about 20% of Americans at some point in their lives will have one of these lesions. That's like a huge number. Um, it doesn't develop on globular skin or mucous membranes like malignant melanoma does. It does not metastasize nearly as easily as other cancers do. We don't know why it doesn't seem to seek out lymph vessels or blood vessels. But as you can see by these gross pictures, it is incredibly destructive, or it can be if you don't catch it. And untreated, it can destroy your face, it can get into your facial bones, it can get into the brain, it can destroy nerves. It can be, uh, it can be big trouble if you don't get this one caught early and taken out. Uh, it typically starts as a small, this nasty thing probably started as this little tiny lesion right here about the size of a eraser of a number two pencil. Could have been dealt with earlier. Uh, but it typically starts as a red. Remember, erythemic is the word for red or skin colored. Uh, it may or may not have pearly rolled borders around it. And... Uh, Sometimes it may grow into a nodule or plaque. Oftentimes it will progress. It may start out as a papule. Remember, papule is a raised lesion less than one centimeter in size, about the size of a AAA, uh, or was it a AA battery? I forget which battery it was, uh, but one centimeter or less. But they do tend to grow bigger. Uh, and with time, as they get bigger, the borders tend to roll up almost into a volcano-like look. And they typically develop a crater on the inside, which is an ulceration, which can ooze blood and scab over and then ooze and scab. And the, the border of the volcano tends to become a pearly white color. Those are classic board words. Pearly white rolled border, equal side, nodular basal cell carcinoma. They probably won't even get that deep. It'll just be basal cell carcinoma. We'll look at the two main types here in a second. Um, the ulceration, it rarely heals, so it just keeps breaking and oozing and bleeding and scabbing and breaking and oozing and scabbing. And they can get very huge and be destructive. A very disturbing picture coming here. So some guy who completely let it go, doesn't believe in medicine, uh, and... That didn't work out so well for him. So you got to catch these early, very destructive. Catch them when they're even smaller than this. 66% of the time it appears on skin that was heavily exposed 
to UV radiation, like the cheeks, uh, the tips of the ears and such. But it doesn't always. It can be on areas of the skin that don't get much UV radiation, um, like the medial canthus of the eye. We have one here that started. And um, yeah, it's got that red kind of getting that volcano look to it. Got this pearly roll border. Classic basal cell carcinoma. Can happen behind the ears. Uh, typically affects people over the age of 40. It takes a while for this to develop. 85% of the time it appears in the head and neck region. Uh, the nose is the most common target for the condition. There are 26 subtypes, uh, which we're not going to get into. We're going to get into the two most common. Over the last decade, there has been a rise in all types of cancer, really, about a 10% rise in basal cell carcinoma. We're not exactly sure, just like malignant melanoma. It's possibly a thinning ozone has to do with this. Remember we talked about the ozone slide last year, but ozone is a protective layer uh, of molecules that float around in the atmosphere, and they absorb these cancer-causing UV types of radiation from the sun. The problem is ozone is destroyed uh, by gases like refrigerants. Here's the list right here. Solvents, foams, aerosols, others. Um, they all contain a molecule called chlorofluorocarbon, which will bind to the ozone molecule and deactivate it to the point it can't stop UV radiation. Um, so that might be a problem. Some fun facts about basal cell carcinoma. African Americans real, uh, rarely get basal cell carcinoma uh, because their melanocytes are so heavily uh, pigmented with, melano, uh, with melanin, uh, so it protects the uh, stratum basale and the basal cells. Uh, people with uh, Caucasians with fair skin, blonde hair, red eyes, or green eyes, they're at much more risk for developing any type of skin cancer for that matter. And UV radiation is definitely a risk. If you've had previous burns on your body, sunburns or any other type of burn, basal cell carcinoma can pop up. Those regions are at risk for the development of basal cell carcinoma or healed injuries. And once you've had basal cell carcinoma, there's a tenfold risk that it'll come back either in the same place or somewhere else within three years. Uh, so reoccurrence is another huge problem with basal cell carcinoma. Uh, what is the pathophysiology? So here's the first lecture. We talked about the skin, and you've had this several times with uh, in histology, but stratum corneum, uh, stratum lucidium, if you're glabrous skin, if you're hirsute skin, you don't have that layer, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basale has basal cells which give birth to all these uh, all these carotinocytes here. Uh, but the basal cells are the ones that become mutated and cancerous. And through UV radiation or whatever, once they become cancerous, and if they have uh, gene mutations, especially that can't control uh, the rapid growth, they can grow up and up and up and up, and you get yourself a nice lesion here, and they can grow down and down and down, and they can grow sideways in the dermis and uh, rip and destroy normal tissue. Um, so, yeah, that's the story with that. Uh, new research says that it's not just the stratum basale cells. Oops. Um, the hair follicle cells that line the hair follicle can also mutate uh, and become cancerous as well. And both of these stratum basale cells or basal cells and hair follicle cells the actual mutation seems to be a mutation with the patch one gene. I think we've talked about that before. Uh, but that's a tumor suppressor gene uh, that lives within all cells. And if a cell starts to become cancerous, this patch gene destroys the cell so it doesn't pass on the cancer, so it doesn't mutate into another cancer cell. And if that patch one gene is out of action, there's nothing to stop a cell from becoming cancerous and dividing into another cancer cell and dividing into four cancer cells and then dividing into eight and then 16 and then 32 and that's that's cancer and, and again strangely 
it doesn't seem to penetrate endothelial cells of blood vessels or lymph vessels. Um, here's the arrow bouncing off. We said malignant melanoma just almost seems to seek out the microcirculation and lymph capillaries, but this one doesn't seem to like endothelial cells, which is a good thing because it won't get into the bloodstream, get into the brain or liver or kidneys and kill you. Uh, so that's good. So it's not, it's, it's rarely basal cell carcinoma is fatal, but it's just so darn destructive. Um, just a deeper slide, UV radiation mutates tumor suppressor genes. We already said this, patch one uh, is a tumor suppressor gene. And without patch one, you can't turn off cancer when it starts. There's four major types, of, although there's 26 types, there's four major types. There's nodular, superficial, spreading, and there's one called uh, morphiform or sclerosin, uh, sclerosine. Uh, there's several other AKAs for that. Uh, and then there's pig, the pigmented type. Some say pigment is the third most common. Some say this morphiform. But this is also the order. Nodular is most common. Uh, superficial spreading is second most common. It's the least aggressive, so that's good. Uh, and then there's the morphoform and pigmented are arguably third and fourth place. Just, the, just to show the main authors that I follow, Fitzpatrick, uh, Bologna, and Rook, uh, they agree on this 26 different subtypes. They agree that nodular superficial spreading and morphoform are number one, two, and three. Uh, but they don't all agree about pigment, as you can see. In fact, only... Fitzpatrick even talks about it. So, uh, let's see. Yep, very destructive. Yep, most common is the is the nodular, uh, and very destructive. It doesn't metastasize. We've said all this uh, already. The nodule is actually eating itself away in this case. But see how what I mean by destructive? How it literally disintegrates tissue. A typical presentation of nodular is kind of like the classic. The pearly white roll borders uh, may be telangiectasia, may predate the borders. They may come at the same time. Maybe the, the telangiectasia may not show. Remember telangiectasia, that's little micro blood vessels that always indicates fast, rapid growth. And then you can get a tumor. You can get that volcano look, look with the passage of time. Uh, and that ulceration bleeds and dries and crusts and rips open again. And you got that constant volcano. Here's a classic basal cell carcinoma. Look at the rolled pearly white border around here. Uh, and look at the, the, the crater here. Uh, so that's, uh, th this happens to be in a crusted stage, but this will start bleeding again pretty soon. But that's a classic nodular basal cell carcinoma. Uh, this one demonstrates nice telangiectasia. Look at the blood vessel growth here. Uh, or you can see the uh, that indicates rapidly growing cells. Perfect crusted uh, or perfectly rolled borders here. They're even a little white, pearly white borders uh, with a lesion, an ulceration like the volcano crater. Uh, so perfect example of classic nodular basal cell carcinoma where there is a nodule. Another nodule here. Uh, which is scarred over pretty good, but you can still see the pearly white borders here uh, on this 58-year-old female who comes in. you got to catch these things, guys. Uh, these You'll see these on people's backs or on the back of their necks, maybe on the top of their heads where they can't see them, maybe even on the face, and they don't think they think it's a wart or something. So got to catch these things. Here's another one. doesn't look so no much nodular anymore. The nodule has cratered in, but it still has rolled borders around the outside. Not so pearly uh, white in this one. Um, here's a really sneaky looking one. Okay, this one is actually superficial spreading basal cell carcinoma. That's the second most common type, so we should say a few words about that. Second most common type. It's about 20%. If you're going to get basal cell carcinoma, there's about 20% chance. One in five chance you'll get this type. Uh, typically presents as a red solitary patch or plaque. So this is not a nodule. It's more like a flat plaque, and it's usually quite red. This one is a little atypical, kind of sneaky to see. Uh, but you can see there is a border around it. Um, there's some redness in here. It 
does have a little pearly white starting in there as well. So it can have the uh, pearly white classic look to it. Here's another one that's relatively flat. It's got red in it, but it's got the pearly white border, but there's no big ulceration. Um, superficial spreading, they can have ulcerations, but uh, not, not always. They're more flat red type lesions, as we'll see here in a second. Surgically, the challenge, uh, these have a special challenge to them, the superficial spreading. Um, they have skip lesions when you start looking at the histology of the dermis that's invaded by these cancer cells. Normally, cancer is in one area, uh, and then once you get outside of that area, everything is good. Uh, but in superficial spreading basal cell carcinoma, you can have patch lesions, so you can have maybe a few millimeters of heavy cancer cells and then a few millimeters of normal cells and then another, as you go further away from the center, there's another area of cancer cells so it can skip and that can be challenging to figure out how much of the lesion to take. So you have to look beyond uh, the normal tissue and that's why these, I mean, when you get these removed, there's going to be a pretty big divot because they have to make sure it's not a skipped lesion uh, and maybe more cancer extends out beyond the skip lesion. So they also tend to reoccur more than the other types of basal cell carcinoma. So reoccurrence is a problem. Um, here's a classic looking uh, red lesion. Don't see the red borders. Uh, it does look a little scaly maybe. Maybe that's the start of an ulceration, but so about a little bit bigger than the tip of a pencil. That's superficial spreading basal cell carcinoma. Um, here's another one. Got a little bit of crust on it. Turned out to be superficial spreading. Um, superficial spreading basal cell carcinoma. I forgot the word spreading there. Uh, it almost has a variegated look. So these can look a little like squamous cell carcinoma. It has a red scaly look. Uh, so that would be a differential diagnosis. I don't think we're going to get the squamous cell, but I do have YouTube videos on that. What about this one? 62-year-old comes in for wrist pain. You look on his forearm and you see this thing, about 9 millimeters in size, so bigger than a pencil. You would refer him out, right? It clearly breaks the mel melanoma ABC laws, right? Irregular borders, can't fold it in half, it's variegated. Um, he doesn't really know if it's been growing or how long or rapidly it's been growing, but um, this turned out to be melanoma. Um, it's not really red. I don't see any pearly red borders. Um, so that's that's a fairly easy one. Superficial spreading malignant melanoma. In general, how do you treat these, uh, these basal cell carcinomas? Well, you have to take out the lesion. Uh, there's, a, there's a procedure called Mohs micrograph surgery. It's kind of an exploration type surgery where they look at slide samples and that determines whether or not they keep digging and keep taking out tissue. You can see that. The pimple popper doctor on TV explains that uh, in one of her episodes. Uh, so take it out. Uh, cryosurgery is available for some of these. You're going to need a plastic surgeon usually if it's a decent sized lesion um, because of the crater they're going to leave in your face after taking it all out. That's gonna, You're going to need some plastic surgery to repair that. Um, some forms, if they're really, really big and you can't, you just can't cut their whole face and skeleton off, uh, you'll be left with, with radi radiation therapy. So make sure you catch these early. Don't miss them. Uh, the recurrence rate is huge in these things. So five-year recurrence rates, 8.5 uh, 8.6% for the neck, truck, and extremities. For the scalp and head and temples, 13%. 17% for the nose eyelids, chin, mandible, and ear. And it's probably got something to do with those skip lesions uh, where the, the surgeon or who's ever taken it out just got fooled. And they took out the cancer and they looked at the margins and they looked good, but if they would have looked further away from the margins, it would have restarted again. So those darn skip lesions. Here's a question. What else has skip lesions in it that we talked about in, oh, that would be in fifth quarter? Good, somebody remembered Crohn's disease, right? Skip lesions throughout the different parts of the intestine. Not ulcerative colitis doesn't have skipped lesions. 
All right, here's the bird f birds for the day. So you guys are more advanced birders now. You're in seventh quarter, and you've had a couple quarters of birding of these birds. So, uh, or maybe you've had two quarters. Anyway, so this is a much smaller bird. That's the snowy egret. The key, yellow feet, is the key. Uh, this is the great egret, huge bird. Uh, the snowy egret would be about about that big compared to him. Much bigger, uh, but if you don't have anything to size him up with, look at the feet, black feet. Yellow feet, snowy egret, black feet, gray egret. All right, good luck on your boards. I hope you crush them. See you guys later.